Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, the market is up, and it's gone up a fair bit, up five percent. So nearly getting to that one point nine trillion dollars, ever so close, and getting gradually close to that two trillion dollar mark again. So things are definitely heating up and looking promising, but we still have all sorts of regulatory issues going on, and we'll have a look at that shortly once we get to some of the news articles. But let's just start with the market. So again, up 5%, that's very, very nice. Volume uh, has gone down a bit. Bitcoin is now at 46,000. Now, can it sort of hold there? It has, I think, wicked up to about 47,000 and then gone back down to about 44,000. So it's moving around a little bit and gas prices, you know, rising a little bit, around about sort of $3 now. Not as bad as what it actually, what it has been, but it's still not great. Far from great, actually. So right, let's have a look. As we can see, generally pretty green. A couple of little bits of red here and there, but nothing too major. And that looks like it's mainly in the stable coins. So what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? For Ravencoin, that is absolutely flying. So up nearly 40% in 24 hours that's nice icp is absolutely rocketing i mean that is unbelievable it was literally 40 30 dollars only about a week ago and now look at it 75 dollars so you know there's hope for those who got into icp i don't know if it'll get back to the 400 dollar mark it could but that is you know for anyone who's bought recently they're probably feeling pretty happy voyager just keeps going from strength to strength at the moment look harmony one we've got you know 15 plus percent gains here and then lots of double digit gains so things are looking pretty good i mean litecoin look out making a bit of a move uh, and that hasn't done too much for a while now so the gains are good what about losses though has anything not done so well in the last 24 hours in the top 100 again it's where i mainly focus uh, on my investments so uh, XFIN network down a little bit, not too much. Uh, Thorchain down a little bit again. Uh, I'm not sure they're going to be able to shake off, you know, the hacks that have happened so easily. I'm not saying the project's dead by any means. I'm just saying I think, you know, they might be sort of having some issues there. We'll have to wait and see. And then we can see the stable coins are down because a lot of people are starting to pile into the projects at the moment. So that's what's happening. Stable coins are down because people are moving out of them and the altcoins and Bitcoin and, you know, uh, Ethereum and all that are going up because people are getting into those. So positive sentiment in the market from that side. We've still got some regulatory issues that we'll look at. First, let's look at the Bitcoin chart, though. We used the 200-day moving average as resistance. Bang, rejected off it twice. Now we have finally broken above it. Not only did we break above the 200, because again, it lined up perfectly with this downtrending, uh, downwards trending line that we had here. And now we've almost basically used that and this upwards trending long-term channel that we've been in, we use that as support. So at the moment, things are looking great. But, you know, with this kind of move that we've had here, you know, was that enough of a... A correction for this to be you know super healthy again i don't know what i know is it's very early in the week though i mean you know it's basically sort of you know tuesday morning monday sort of night uh over in the stateside time tuesday evening here in australia but things are looking pretty bullish uh, and I'm quite happy with how the market's tracking at the moment. Mainly, I'm glad that we got above the 200-day moving average and that we are finally in this upwards trending channel because, again, if I zoom right out, hopefully this will load up soon. There we go. This is where we have been since that big crash in March in 2020. This is the channel that we're in. We broke above it, fell back below, stayed way above, and then fell back into it, uh, and then actually broke below. And again this is how the cycles that they are different every single cycle is different there's no cycle that's the same so just be careful with you know when people say oh the cycles are still the same they're always a little bit different and people are saying well this is just like the 2013-14 uh, run it's not the same as that that had two blow-off tops this didn't have a blow-off top this was total manipulation. Uh, it then fell down below, and this was total manipulation. So it's not that there was no manipulation before. It's just now we got really big, heavy institutional uh, manipulation and things like that. So they're things that we need to consider and keep in mind. But look, at the moment, this chart just looks pretty nice to me. Again, I'm really glad that we're up in here. 
and we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Now, a big scam that's going on over in Italy at the moment. <sighs> There's always scams. I mean, it doesn't matter what industry. It's not just cryptocurrency, but they are pretty uh, ingenious, these people. So Italian scammers are selling fake COVID-19 health passes on Telegram, and they're selling them for cryptocurrency. So it's not really a cryptocurrency scam as such, but it's just that they are taking in cryptocurrencies. Now, <laughs> it's funny because cryptocurrencies are highly trackable. But in saying that, there are definitely cryptocurrencies and things that people can do who are a bit more smarter that they can kind of, you know, put them through, you know, they basically call them sort of washing machines and things like that uh, and turn them into other cryptos and they can't be sort of traced. But whether that's happening or not, but it is sad. I mean, everyone wants to get these COVID-19 health passes at the moment uh, and, you know, people being scammed out of cryptocurrencies for them is pretty sad it says here the italian police blocked the illegal activity of local fraudsters who offered fake green passes on telegram in exchange for digital assets so bitcoin ethereum who knows what i mean i you know i obviously haven't got on there to see exactly what it is i'm staying far far away from it but yeah cryptocurrencies are kind of the you know they're hot at the moment there's no other way to say it you know we've been through that little bear trend and now they are starting to pick up pace and we've broke above you know the down uh trending line that we've had and we're back in that upwards trending channel so really things are looking quite bullish at the moment but we always just need to keep in mind that that can that can quickly turn as we've seen there's a lot of manipulation going on now at the moment and you know we'll just have to wait and see what the big players want you know, are they happy because they, you know, built their sweet positions down in here to now let this run up to a hundred, a hundred and fifty, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, or are they going to let it get to, you know, and I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but maybe it gets to fifty thousand and then they smash it and it comes back down to thirty thousand. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. I've always got, you know, again, what I think might happen. And then a plan for what if it doesn't happen, then where do I go and what do I do? So hopefully you're doing the same and you've learned that lesson. I mean, most of the time, in all fairness, my plan with cryptocurrencies is just hold, but I'm not buying into all-time highs. Bitcoin is kind of really the one kind of exception. I will buy a little bit of Bitcoin generally all the time. But once Bitcoin goes above 60000 I'm not putting a whole lot of money into Bitcoin. I'm focusing on the altcoins there. And then likewise, once, you know, altcoins that I've been in for a while are in price discovery, I really start to scale back how much money I'm putting into them because I know they're getting closer to the end than they are sort of at the start. The best opportunity was again way back, you know, in March 2020 getting in there and after that depending. Here was a good price. Whether we'll see Bitcoin come below sort of 30,000 in the next bear market, I guess we'll have to wait and see. You know, BitBoy says that, you know, there's talk that the institutions don't want Bitcoin to go above $100,000, but they might not be able to stop it. It could still push out to 120 or something. That's great, and he's made a lot of really great calls, and I love his channel. I'm a viewer. I'll let you know right now. But he does need to be careful that maybe he's being told what, you know institutions want him to know and again he feels like he's got an insider and again i'm not trying to dismiss him and say that he doesn't but you just got to be careful that maybe they have a plan for him as well they're pretty smart and pretty cunning how did he get this insider would you know did they reach out to him and there's all sorts of stuff going on so i'd just be very careful that you know they probably know bitcoin is going to go to about a hundred thousand dollars really no matter what they might be saying that oh, it's only going to go to a hundred thousand to get a whole lot of people to sell at around about a hundred thousand. That'll be that ninety to a hundred thousand. Lots of people will start to sell, and then they'll let it drop down to again, you know, maybe eighty thousand, fifty thousand, or something. And the institutions buy back in again when they didn't really sell too much, or maybe they want everyone to start selling around about there so they can load up again, still out of what might consider to be a good price. To then see it run to two, three hundred thousand dollars, they're the things that again, me, I'm always sort of semi skeptic, but I'm always semi bullish at the same time. But I just, yeah, I would be careful with information that you know 
anyone gives you. So don't blindly believe anyone. And again, I'm, I'm in no way having a crack at BitBoy whatsoever. I really like his channel and I watch it all the time. I just am very skeptical of, you know, people saying, oh, I've got inside information and that, particularly when it's, you know, you know, what they call institutional inside information. People in the institutions, you know, they're working for the institutions. They are the institutions. So we just got to be careful. No one really knows exactly what's going to get, happen. You know, Bitcoin, BitBoy, sorry, Bitcoin. <laughs> BitBoy made some really calls in and about, uh, in and around sort of here. He got some good info. But again, is that because that's what they wanted him to know? Who knows? We'll wait and see. Again, moving on from that. All right. The crypto bill, it got knocked down, unfortunately. Uh, and it was one rogue senator. He's not rogue, but one lone senator, I should say. Uh, he put in something that he wanted and he didn't get it. Uh, and then the whole thing got voted down, unfortunately. That's the amendments got voted down, not the crypto bill, sorry, I should say. So in a blow to the digital assets industry, the US Senate did not adopt a bipartisan compromise on a crypto tax provision in its $1 trillion infrastructure bill after a vote on Monday. U.S. Senator Richard Shelby filed an objection after attempting to attach his own amendment to increase military spending. Now, Senator Bernie Sanders objected the Shelby motion, resulting in Shelby then objecting to the overall compromise. So that's how it's got knocked down. Now, I did mention yesterday that it still has time to, you know, pass just because it didn't get the votes it needed now. That can still happen. But it has failed to get over the first hurdle, I suppose is what you would say. I think it was a race like a hurdle. You've got to get over you know, the hurdles and get to the end. Now, you can knock a few hurdles down, but generally the more hurdles you knock down, the less likely you are that you're going to win. So they knocked over the first, well, they didn't knock over the first hurdle, but the first hurdle's been knocked over and they need to be able to get up sooner or otherwise this horrible bill may actually pass. And that's just not going to be good for the, the crypto space. But it, that's more so in America. That doesn't mean this gets adopted by the rest of the world. Somebody, some country somewhere is likely going to stand up and say, hey, we're all about crypto and you're going to get everyone sort of, you know, involved in the crypto space moving to there. And that's just the, that's just the truth of it. That is the way it's going to work. Unless by some miracle, you know, sort of 95% of the countries all, you know, and in particular the first world nation countries, you know, just really hammer down on it, then we're in trouble for crypto. But as I've said before, I think even the old heads and the old financial, you know, traditional finance know that the old system won't work. It is going to fail. There's only so long they can keep kicking that can down the road before it just busts. They need crypto to save the dollar. That's, you know, that's the way it is. But, you know, we'll wait and see. I'm still hopeful that, you know, the good amendments get through and you know crypto has a very bright future i think it will either way but it's just how bright uh that really is the question because of you know old people who just don't understand the tech and the things are changing you know the older you get the less you like change now that's a very general generalization some old people are quite happy to change but a lot of older people are generally set in their ways and they just don't like change and it seems to be that there's a lot of really old people um yeah, making decisions on something that they generally really don't understand. Right, NFTs, I mean, they're just getting super crazy. Ethereum, so they had pet rock NFTs, and these were back in 2017, and now all of a sudden they're selling for more than $100,000. This NFT, 100000 that is, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's people in the NFT space that probably understand the value of it. I, you know, I'm not 100% sure on that. And so they, you know, are buying what they consider to be, you know, a great buy, I don't know. But yeah, I just, I like the crypto punks, uh, you know, the crypto apes, I think they are. Outside of that, then, you know, we're really getting into super speculative stuff. Crypto punks, though, I think they're not as speculative as they are kind of the originals. They're the original NFTs, so I think they will be worth a lot of money going into the future. Crypto rocks or crypto pet rocks. Yeah, I don't know. We'll wait and see. I, I, even if I had the money, if I had 
like you know hundreds of millions of dollars i wouldn't be paying a hundred thousand dollars for a pet rock but that's me and that's why i haven't really made any money in the nft space and people have been getting in there and flipping stuff for absolute fortunes and there wasn't even there was even a kid that got out there and he made his own sort of crypto whale type punk things and he made one hundred and sixty thousand dollars in a weekend so yeah shows that there's a people a lot smarter than me and maybe this hundred thousand dollar purchase for a uh, ethereum pet rock uh is quite cheap and a really good investment time will tell tether i think this is massive so tether has released an assurance report and it's been reviewed by moore cayman and an auditor for investment funds and digital assets now the revort the revort <laughs> The report provides a breakdown of the company's assets and reserves, which Moore Kane claims are around $62.7 billion as of June 30th. So again, I was, I said this before, I think Tether, they can see the writing on the wall and they don't want to simply just, you know, give up their uh, position as the number one stable coin. They're doing everything they can to get legit and get audited so they can remain in the space because otherwise... Even if they didn't stay number one, they would be driven out if they don't get their act together because they can see regulation is coming. So they are getting their yeah, ducks in a row, as they say, or the, you know, all lined up and yeah, making a good red hot crack at trying to you know, have longevity. So this is good for the space in general, but now we'll have to wait and see uh, how long that lasts because the regulators are still coming after Tether. No, no matter what happens, they're going to get in there and try and yeah, pull them apart because USDC seems like it has the backing uh, of the big people now. It's not the biggest, it's still got a ways to go, but I think Tether, uh, they know that they either get regulated or face uh, a whole lot of trouble and not just Tether disappearing in the digital space, but also people being put in jail and things like that. All right, last but not least, all right, Venezuelan authorities have shut down the power supply to Bitcoin miners in key states. Now, the reason they've done this and they haven't come out and given an official explanation is that they said some people with knowledge on the matter state that the action was taken due to the enormous energy consumption these operations have in the zone. So this is not good for Bitcoin. I mean, we know they use a lot of uh, energy in general. So it says to me that there's not enough energy to go around uh, in this space and Bitcoin is just using too much. Now, we can only hope that they're using a lot of green energy there. But uh, if it's not green energy and it's coal energy, then again, it is just bad for the space. But again, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, this is early reports. There is no official explanation on what's happening. And it could be some other regulatory kind of issue that we have going on. Uh, yeah, before we can get a, a definitive answer, I suppose. All right, look, that's it from me. A bit of a late one. I'm doing day shifts at the moment, so it gets a little bit harder to uh, spend a lot of time on these. I need to get to sleep and get up early in the morning to go to work. But that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everybody should be on that game train at the moment. Things are looking absolutely fantastic. Proceed with caution as always. And I'll see you next time.